Today on Bridges, we're going to take a look into one man's journey into the love of God. Welcome to Bridges. I'm Monica Schmelter, and I'm glad that you could join us. My guest today is Peter Demas, and I'm really delighted for us to delve into his story, One Man's Journey into the Love of God. And Peter, it's so nice to have you here today. I appreciate it. Thank you for having me. I'm excited to be, kind of be able to talk about your book, Afraid to Trust. And I'm excited because I think that while so many of us talk about our love for God, we are afraid to trust Him. Has that been your experience? Yeah, it has actually. One of the things I realized as I, so I didn't get saved until about six years ago mm -hmm. and uh, went to church most of my life, but didn't really, uh, didn't really know the love of God until about six years ago. And, um, but, but after that, the, 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 the fears that would take hold in, 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 in all different ways, I didn't even realize that I was afraid until God took all those fears away. Mm -hmm. And then as I, as I would, would try to revert back to my, my normal habits, my normal way of living, I realized that the opposite of fear is not courage. The opposite of fear is trust. Because mm -hmm. there are people that are, uh, can be afraid and do courageous acts. Yes, absolutely. You know, so yes. so when, we, when, we, when we do it, so one of the things, and I, and I actually suggest this in the book, is I say, you know, write out on a piece of paper and write out, say, I'm afraid of, and whatever it is, and then scratch out the I'm afraid of and say, I don't trust God in, oh. and then you get in your car and you say it out loud, and people are always like, "Oh, I can't do that." And I'm like, "But you're saying it in your heart yes, every you time are. you say you're afraid, <laughs> you know." So He already knows it. So go ahead and say it out loud. Give you an opportunity to mm -hmm. repent from it, because as your reaction just said, showed, no one wants to say that. Nope. But but by by getting that out in the open and having that honest relationship with God will help you be able to repent and turn and trust in him and realize he'll see you through those situations. And that's so important. So I want us to start here, Peter, because many people watching will know you from Demas restaurants and, and hospitality and, and all of that. And yet, in some ways, you've described yourself uh, before six years ago as a church-going pagan. So you're going to church for all these years, but you've really only known the Lord personally for six years Tell us about that. So I grew up in church, you mm -hmm. know, it, but I grew up in church that I, I mean, I hated going to church. You did? I mean, oh, Why did you awful. go? My parents made me. <laughs> um, you know, it was one yeah. of those things you, were, you, you, you went to church and you didn't have a choice, you know, and, and, you know, I would go to church. I was bored. I would go to Sunday school and I would do crafts and I hated crafts. So, mm -hmm. but I was always a questioner and challenger. So even when I go to the main service, uh, it was our tradition of the church growing up as you, as you left the... Uh, the priest would stand at the end of the aisle and you would shake his hand as you as you left. And I remember stopping and embarrassing my mother and asking the question, I don't understand how God can be everywhere at once. And I was probably six years old at the time, you know, so, um, and, you know, he tried to explain it to me the best that he thought he could sure. and it didn't work. Yeah. And so, but I was always challenging and questioning and, and um, I did not understand. Um, but the, the I was really looking at kind of more of the the surface level and the or the religious level, and not understanding there was a relationship behind it. Mm -hmm. And as I as I continue to grow in that process, I grew to I went to a Christian school. I went to a you know again to church every Sunday. But I grew to dislike Christians and dislike a lot of them because some of them were mean to me. Mm -hmm. And so instead of realizing that they're saying something in the name of Christ even though they aren't doing it in the body of Christ and they're not acting in the name mm -hmm. of Christ. So I, I, I started uh, glumping them all together and they became a target for me as opposed to, um, as opposed to trying to understand and realize that my relationship's with Jesus. And yeah. so. And what I hear you describing, and, and it's common, and I've met many people, so sometimes in church if we challenge or if we ask tough questions, especially when we're only six, it can be embarrassing to parents, but it's, people also think that it means that we don't believe because we have questions. And yes. that's, that's hard. And I've learned over years, it took me, that doesn't mean that a person doesn't believe it. They're just trying to process through and figure it out. Is that what was happening? Oh, very much so. And even, even more, even when I hit college was even stronger. Um, so I went to a, a, a Christian student center and truthfully I went there because of a girl. Um, <laughs> And um, a lot of a lot of good and bad decisions yeah. I made yeah. was because of a girl. And yeah. um, but she, uh, but I went there, and and the the guy in charge wanted to do a Bible study with me, and I, 
and I was really uh, uh, questioning him a lot. And and my intent was sincere. I look mm -hmm. and look back now and realize that uh, he would not have taken it that way. I came across a lot more aggressive than yeah. probably what I needed to. Uh, but he told me to leave. Um, mm -hmm. He he threw me out. Um, yeah. And then I was asked to. I went to another church one time, and and I was in a Sunday school, and they asked me not to come back because I was uh, uh, too disruptive. So a lot of it had to do with it. In fact, when I f after I got saved, I met my pastor. The very first thing I said to him was, I said, I have a lot of questions, and I don't want to seem like I'm, I'm challenging you, or, or, or I, I said, I just don't understand. And, and he made it really clear to me that it, it's okay to have things on the I don't know shelf. Absolutely. You know? And so, yes. so, so it's okay for him to not ha to have things on the I don't know shelf too. So he was very clear saying, I don't know, you mm -hmm. know, and maybe God will reveal that to you one day. Mm -hmm. and, and I have to be okay with that. Yeah. And I think that all of us as believers have to be okay with that. And what I say to people, sometimes if somebody's questioning me really aggressively, I try to look at their heart and I, and I let them know that I just have to be comfortable with not knowing everything. And I point out that even like in medical circles and in medical science, they will, the, the smartest neurologist in the world will tell you that he or she doesn't know everything. So it's just okay. And we have to learn to be okay with that and still seek truth and faith. You know, I, 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 I ask people all the time, I say, can you understand, tell me how FaceTime works? Because I know I can pick up my phone and I can see you yes. on the phone, but I don't know, I can't explain why if I hit this button and you hit yours, why it goes up to the satellite back. I don't understand that. I said, but, but you have more faith in Apple. You don't sit there and challenge that and say, That's because right. I don't know, I'm just going to give up. That's but right. you'll have more faith in Apple than you will in God, the, mm -hmm. the person who, who, who invented the entire universe at the, speaking one word. You know, so it's okay uh, to, to not know. We, we operate on faith all the time, yes, but we, we operate in faith in, in areas that we don't want to talk about, you know, yeah. especially when you are a non-believer. Exactly. So I want us to delve into this book, Afraid to Trust. And as we do that, what changed for you six years ago? What happened? Uh, well, it was, a, it was a series of events, actually, that, that led. But the, it, it culminated in a man named Angus Buchan. Um, he's a South African evangelist. Uh, he, uh, the movie Faith Like Potatoes is about his life. And he came to Murfreesboro to do a men's event. And my wife wanted me to go, and I refused. My friends wanted me to go, and I refused. <laughs> um, and then we, we found out that he was also going to be at our church on a Sunday Sunday service. Mm -hmm. And um, and so my wife was like, we're going to go. I was like, I don't want to hear this guy. I don't want to go. I don't want to do this. And it's going to be some crazy Christian. I don't want to deal with this guy. Mm -hmm. You know, So that was kind of... Yeah. And so um, we, I finally said, okay, fine. If we go to the 830 service, knowing my wife will never get the kids ready by 830. Well, she got him all ready, and we went, and he didn't preach at the 830 service, so I thought I won. So I was like, cool, we get to go home, we get to have a great day, and um, she's angry um, that we don't get to hear Angus, and we get in a fight about it on the way home. Finally, I'm like, fine, we'll go back, and then we get in a fight on the way back. Well, no, you're not going back, and so we, we finally get there. I love and <laughs> this is so true for so many married couples in the car to and oh, from church. It's, yes, yes, it's uh, it, it happened a lot more frequently than I would like to admit, but we um, so anyway, we get there and. Um, uh, and, and somehow uh, we end up uh, sitting around a group of men that travel all over the world just to pray for Angus. Mm -hmm. And they started, they started talking to us a little bit. Angus did an altar call, and I went up. And uh, you would think that would be great and wonderful, yeah. and, uh, but I didn't like it. I didn't like it at all. Like, what would happen? Like, how was I conned? You know, like, I, I mean, that was, I felt like I was being conned. And, and then... Through another series of just comical events, I ended up the next day in a meet and greet with him, and he asked me the question. He said, you know, if you're willing to die for your country, why are you afraid to speak out for God? And it, and it hit me hard because I've I'd never wanted to be afraid of things. Um, I didn't realize how fear was manifesting in my life, but I, was, I saw myself as a fighter. I, if I didn't like something, I went after it. And... I spent the next three days at a, at a Memphis hotel. I was in a board meeting in Memphis, and, um, and I had to go up there. And I slept four hours and three days just fighting with God. And, um, and uh, finally, on my, 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 my taking a shower, the day I had to go home, and I knew I was tired, and I had yeah. to take that drive back. And I was like, there's just, I'm, I'm worried about it. 
And I, then I'm like, okay, what does it mean to be a Christian? What does this happen? And, and finally, I said what I said was my first real prayer of my life, which is I said, God, you win. I'm turning everything over to you. And um, when that happened, I felt literally, and I can still picture the trajectory, coming from behind and literally lifting up everything. And that's when every fear, insecurity, everything just came out. And I, and I fell into the, to the tub, bawling, crying. And just everything changed. You know, the sights were different, smells were different, the ta taste, texture, everything was just different. I could sense it and feel it. Um, and then, you know, came home and told my wife a, a couple of days later that I wanted to be baptized, and that uh, surprised her. Um, and um, I would guess so. Yes. <laughs> if you're arguing about going to church and you don't want to be there, you go to a trip and a board meeting, and you come home and you want to be baptized. Well, and she even she she even says she has a chapter in the book, and she even said that while I was there. I was bothering her because I would text her all this loving stuff and she was getting angry with me like what's going on like why is he acting this way and I was <laughs> because it was, was so different than it the was, normal yes. or the, yeah. the husband that she knew is PD yeah, would was be, totally I'd be different gone I'd be, I would you know be you know, okay I'll just I'll, I'll have to call because it's my obligation to call at this time you know and that was more of the approach versus you know the the, the genuine love that that I that I that I did feel for her and that I feel for her now of and and so it, it was, um, again, all those barriers and everything just, just slowly going away. But I, but I went kicking and screaming. I, I mean, I fought with God with, with everything I had. Yeah, well, and you he put won. up a really good fight for a I lot did. of years. <laughs> <laughs> I did. He, he showed many ways, too, along the way. And, and, and he reminds me of them from time to time that I have to constantly say, God, I'm sorry. Please forgive me for that action. And then I get to move on to my next yeah. to his next reminder to me. And it was such a dramatic change that for your wife, she didn't know how to respond to these no. loving texts and this different man that was her husband. Not at all, not at all. In fact, she, she, even, she even later has, has, and part of her testimony is that she says, you know, I, I became jealous of Jesus mm -hmm. um, because all of a sudden then she, where she was first in my life, she became second in my life. And then she started realizing and seeing. Um, uh, so, so immediately after, I mean, I, I, I bought this Bible actually, and I would just read it and mark it up. And I read every Christian book that I can get a hold of. And um, I, I read the, the entire Bible in about six months the That's first amazing. time. And, and, um, and she was like, I don't understand like where this fire came from. And then she wanted to learn more and sort of seeing it. And then same thing true with work. So we, I recognize that our, our work is my ministry field. Mm -hmm. And we have so many employees that don't know Christ. Yeah. And you know, so many employees we have, parents did not have prayer in public school, so they're not exposed to it at all. Right. They know nothing. And so when I, when I would ask the question, do you know who Abraham is? And you know, two out of 12 knew who Abraham was, and three out of 12 knew who Moses was. You know, I realized that's where our ministry is, mm -hmm. and so we had to turn that over as well. So to, to turn your, your wife over, your, your kids over, your, your business over, mm -hmm. to turn all that over to Christ, um, and, uh, and while you're still trying to learn and understand the process <laughs> too, I mean, it was, it, it was, it's, it's been a, a radical change it's for pretty, everybody around me. Very yes. radical. We've got to take a break. We want you to stay with us. When we come back, we're going to continue to talk to Peter about his story of faith and being afraid to trust and how he is getting to know Christ better every single day. We'll be back in just a moment. You can purchase a copy of today's show for $15. Call us at 615-754-0039 or send a check to the address on the screen. Please mention the program number on the screen. For more information on a guest, visit our website, ctntv.org. If you're just joining us today on Bridges, I am talking to Peter Demas. We're learning his faith story, taking a look into his book, Afraid to Trust. And so, Peter, you've described yourself in your earlier years as a church-going pagan. Fight Christianity for all those years. Finally, God wins. You turn everything over to the Lord, <clears throat> so much so that your wife really gets jealous of Jesus, as she calls it. You turn over the kids to the Lord your business, Demas's restaurants. Um, you're also an attorney. Um, you turn everything over to the Lord, and now you really look at your business as your ministry. Right. So we, once we recognized and that, that 
that people did not know even just the basic stories of the Bible. You know, Moses, Abraham. We're not talking about like Hezekiah, right? You know, I mean, we're we're, we're you know we're we're talking about the people that, that Disney has done movies about, yes. and they they did not know who that was. And we realized we we have a, a ministry field right here, and so we we changed our first thing we did was we changed our purpose statement. Mm -hmm. So our purpose statement is now is to glorify God by serving others. Amen. And uh, we do that by serving and caring for our customers and serving and caring for our employees. And then we later created values, and we realized that our employees didn't even know what values were. Right. And so now we teach them a value of the week. Um, every week we, we teach them one of the values that we have. We teach them what it means, how it means in their life, not just in their work life, but in their, in their personal life mm -hmm. as well. And Could you give me an example? Yeah, so, so one of the things that we, one of the values that we have is, is, is courage. It would be the courage to speak up or the courage to stay silent. Amen. You know, sometimes, you know, you, you, your, your emotions are there. You know, the Bible says you, your heart is desperately wicked and deceitful above all right. things. You know, so, so when, when you get that anger and that emotion, you want to you wanna say it's my responsibility to speak out. And I, I got to be in control of these emotions. And, and so I, I say it instead of having the courage and the, to say, wait a second, I'm not going to say it now. Mm -hmm. I need to, and this is something that can wait until a moment later. Yeah. And so we, we teach them those, we teach them those, those things. Or, or um, uh, another, another one of my, my favorites is dedication. You know, it's, it's, we, 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 we have to, you know, we're, we're part of a team, yes. you know, and, and even I don't agree with all the, the policies that we have when they first came out, but I have to, but I'm going to be, you know, I'm going to dedicate myself to these. So, so we teach those, those values that, that we have. Um, you know, that's amazing, Peter. I've often thought, I hear so many times people say, I'm sure you've said it, heard people say it too. I just want to work in ministry full time. And I just think that our businesses and our workplace, ministry just means service. We can serve the Lord wholeheartedly wherever we are. And there are so many opportunities in business which you're seeing yourself. There is, uh, and there's a lot of organizations now that are addressing this. Like yeah. there's, a, uh, there's a group called C12, which deals with Christian business owners, and there's Living Scent Ministries, um, and there's plenty of others that are, that are, that are like that, that, that now target business. Billy Graham actually has said that the next revival would come through the marketplace. Amen. And so, so I, I agree, but then there's the people that, um, so I'll give you a great example. We had a, um, uh, a woman not that long ago um, who choked on a piece of steak um, mm -hmm. and turned blue. We had a paramedic that was working for us that was tried the Heimlich, ended up having to give her CPR before the ambulance came. And we had another server just walk over there, put her hand on her, and start praying. You know, for that time, you know, she was breathing by the time the ambulance right. came. And um, but but to, you know, just those type of actions and all those customers around that got to see that server yes. go over and pray. Now. Ten years ago, that no server would have been brave enough at all to do that in one of our restaurants. But but just by us being bold and and uh, and, and outspoken in our faith, uh, then she was able to to realize that she it gave her permission yeah. without actually doing it. And I think so many times we want to say we want to do it, but again that fear takes hold. Mm -hmm. I mean, there's so many times even now where I sit there and I walk away and I'm like, oh, I had a perfect opportunity. Yep. And I just, and I forgot and, and, you know, and I just, and I, and I failed at it, but I know God's going to present another one. Mm -hmm. But as long as we're always looking, as long as we're being intentional with it, the opportunities are around us all the time to, to just present the gospel. Absolutely. And the book is called Afraid to Trust. It's written by Peter Demas. And, you know, you were talking about being bold and it's like somebody's got to go first when it comes to being bold, right? Well, there, there is that. Um, and, and, but they also recognize that there's another side to that who is going to come at you hard. Yeah. And, we, we, and, and I address a lot of the backlash that we received um, and a lot of the stuff that, that we've done. I, I get it frequently now. We'll get you know, uh, criticism. We have little Bibles that, that are there for people to take. It's not in the a, restaurants? In the and restaurants, okay. yes. And, um, you know, and, and uh, it's amazing how offensive just having the Bible out would be. Mm. You know, it's a little New Testament pocket uh -huh. Bible. How do you respond to that backlash? What do you do? You know, there's various ways. Um, you know, one of the ways that that, that, that happened is is we, we got we got attacked in the, in the newspaper actually one time pretty hard about it, and um, uh, there was a lot of misquotes and a lot of um, there was actually a quote that that wasn't a quote at all. I mean, it was it was it was. It was crazy, and so like you were quoted, for example, as saying something that really, honestly, you didn't say. Yes, and um, and and there was it was out of the mayor's prep breakfast that came about three or four years back in Murfreesboro, 
And um, so from that, we, uh, you know, my wife and I originally, the first thing we wanted to do was again, just to you know, call the PR team, do this. And, yeah. and we're like, no, we're gonna reach out and have everyone pray. So I just sent it to everybody I know and said, I need y'all to pray for me through this situation. Mm -hmm. And there was a, a Ban Demas's Facebook page. There was a, um, oh, know, that's people, serious oh, backlash. Yes. I mean, that's not just somebody saying, I don't like that you have Bibles no, out, whatever. They, people wanted to. They tweeted out my home address. Um, you know, to, I mean, it was, so those were, so yeah, it was, um, and you know, we wanted That's to, horrible. oh, it was, it was not fun uh, time. You know, we had to talk to our kids, you know, who were young and say, okay, if this happens, this is what you need to do. But what was incredible about it was how my kids reacted. So we're praying together as a family and we always let the kids go first so they don't just copy us, you know, and, and, um, and my, my daughter prays first, and she prays to forgive those who are persecuting us. Amen. And then my son prays to bless those who are persecuting us. Amen. And my wife and I were like, oh, my goodness. You know, we didn't realize this. So we met with the newspaper, and they were all there, and you could tell they were prepared. You know, they were, they were, ready, to, they were ready for a fight. And we went through, and we went through all the things that was wrong, what could have happened. I'm like, you realize if you closed us down, what could have happened to this community? You know, all the nonprofit stuff that we give, all the dollars that we give, to even to even sales tax dollars. You know, how all the people's lives would have been hurt. Mm -hmm. And so we were talking about that, and then they said, well, "Okay, well, I don't understand why we're we meeting." And we're like, "Well, we're just here just to just to let you know that we wanted to thank you." I'm like, what do you mean? And I said, "Well, I told them the story about my kids." And I said, "I never could have taught them that." You know, that's not something that I ever could have taught them unless they got to experience it and see it and understand it. What was incredible about that is we leave, we, we leave, the, 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 the editor was crying when we left. And what was so awesome about that experience was immediately it all stopped. Like it was like a light switch. So a lot of times, you know, your, your problems will go away like a dimmer. You know, and, but this time it stopped like a switch. You know, now we didn't. We were still walking around waiting for something to happen. Right. You know, we're, we're, we're all, but, but everything just stopped. And we're like, okay, what, what happened? Like, what's going on? And, and basically God needed, to, God, God, God we, we showed the grace of God and he ended it Amen. all. And, and, and again, he will never leave or forsake you. That's the, that's the, the, the most amazing thing that comes mm -hmm. out of it. As long as we abide in him, then, 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 then we can't, he can't leave us if we're abiding in him Amen. and in his word. That's right. And so when you're going through these, these struggles and these trials, whether it's through business failures or marriage failures or, or whatever's happening, when you're going through that, realize that, that you know, God like has like a bungee cord wrapped around you and you're falling toward the rocks below and you're like, I'm going to hit the rocks. Yeah. And then you get jank back up. Now you may not go where you want to go when right. you get yanked back up, <laughs> but God will not let you hit those rocks. That's right. And when you realize that and you understand how to, to have that manifest in your life, it's just, uh, everything is opened up and it's just absolutely incredible for you. And it really does dispel the fear. The name of the book again is Afraid to Trust. It's written by Peter Demas. And you know, Peter, some people may look at you and think, well, you know, but you have all these restaurants, you're doing all this in business. And yet, you're a man, person, just like everybody else. And I would think when you got that backlash that that had to hurt, had well, to make you afraid for your kids, oh, but yeah. you trusted. Well, it wasn't just, it wasn't from that too. We had actually, we had just started another restaurant mm -hmm. and everything in that restaurant failed mm -hmm. from the beginning. The, 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 the plans did not line up right. The, uh, the first night we had, just the just first Friday night we had, we had an average cook time of 40 minutes. I was average. Okay, so so you can imagine how horrible that was. Yeah. You know, the, the next day, the next day, I mean, I was bawling, crying to my wife on the phone, you know, saying I, I got it fixed and I was trying to comfort her and then she ends up having to comfort me. Um, and then, you know, and then it was one thing after another after another. And then we, we finally, and we recognize through this process, and at one point in time, it's, it's the only time I ever heard God's audible voice was, was, I, was, on the, I, was I was on my office floor and I was crying early Saturday morning. And I heard a voice just say, get up and go to work. And I got up, I kind of looked around, there was nobody in there. I went over to go to work and, and I was doing some emails and, um, and my Bible was next to me. And, and, uh, I, and I remembered a verse um, in, in Matthew that I saw when I wasn't even a Christian. I saw it, I saw it at a, a hospital room um, and it was in Matthew 6 saying, do not worry. Mm -hmm. And so I went and read it and then I found the reference to Philippians 4, 6 which says, do not be anxious for anything, but with prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, submit your request to God. And I realized that we weren't being thankful. 
So, so from that, we started, we started praying praise of Thanksgiving. We had, a, we had a prayer meeting at the restaurant. Anybody that wanted to come could. And we started thanking customers, employees, and we started being thankful. And we started getting out of that process and all those problems that we had. And then comes the, the backlash. And, yeah. but, but then instead of, of us, we're like, okay, this is what we need to do. And since then, you know, anytime you get that fear, we realize that if, if we write down a list of the things we're thankful for, yeah. and we just sit down, and, and, and I encourage people to, in the, 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 to get down on your knees and say, God, you know, I thank you I live in a community that, that, that has a grocery store. Amen. You know, and just yeah. something simple like that. Mm -hmm. But once you start that process, I mean, you, you, you have to stop at a page because you'll just keep going. But the first five are the hardest ones. Yeah. You know, so, so once you start writing down the things you're thankful for, um, and, and it works in all areas. Like my wife and I might have a problem and I might be irritated with her. You know, I'll, I'll start writing down everything I'm thankful for with her. And it is incredible how much better she gets. <laughs> it's not her, it's, it's because of that. Yeah, thankfulness <laughs> is God's idea. And what you're really saying is even though we all have trials and things that make us afraid in this life, if we will choose thankfulness, it won't stop backlash, but it will see us all the way through. It does, absolutely. And you know, and, and when you're when you're going through those problems, you want to focus so much on the problems. Right. But but re remember, I heard I heard a preacher say this one time. I just absolutely love it. He says, when you're praising, you're praising God. If you're not praising, who are you talking to? Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> and so 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 it's and, and who's going to help fix your problems? Right. And so you by, by 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 transforming it into praise and. Yeah, I don't want to all the time. I'm actually a, a pretty negative, cynical person mm -hmm. by nature. And, and so I don't want to praise. Mm -hmm. But again, that's a choice. Praise yeah. is a choice. Joy is a choice. You know, we, we all strive to say, what is our purpose in life? Our purpose is to glorify God. Right. That's, that's, that's already outlined. We don't get to choose our purpose. No. Our, our, our role is, 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 a, is, is a Christian. Our purpose is to glorify God. Uh, but, but how we... How we do it, that's that's where we where we get to choose, and we get exactly. to choose it through praise. We get to choose Amen. it through our work. You know, I mean, so we get to we have a lot of opportunities it's a powerful there. Powerful choice. We're out of time, but I Certainly. want to thank you for coming today. Well, thank you so much. I really appreciate you having. It's thank been, you so much. And good to have you. The name of the book again is Afraid to Trust. It's written by Peter Demas. I'm so sorry we're out of time. We've got to go, but we say God bless you. Welcome to Bridges. I'm Monica Schmelter. I'm glad that you could join us today. All of these different people united on the same team, uh, praying for each other, blessing each other. And it was that hope and that faith is why I survived. When my dad was preaching for a youth revival, uh, and I don't know what happened still, I can't believe it. I was the first person who stood up and walked down the aisle. He gave me my first Bible and he opened a window in my life to Christian faith through Jesus Christ. When you want the Lord to speak to you, it's like you don't know what He's going to tell you. If we'll be just that one that could step up in faith to say, God, I just trust that you have better than this. No one else can tell you what you need except God. Because He loves us. We're His children. 